Here, buddy. Have a look at this HP computer. It's a Pavilion P2 series model P2 1033W. This one of those, um, I don't know what you would call it. You know, it looks like a full size desktop, you know, typical consumer grade desktop tower from like a big box store, like Best Buy, Walmart, Staples, or wherever. But, if we actually look inside the thing, it looks more like a waste of space using that little bitty motherboard, <laughs> that single hard drive, and optical drive, and no place where a power supply would even go. All this wasted space makes you wonder why, you know, you know. I just, I just wonder why they wouldn't have just marketed this as a really tiny computer because it's like people like tiny computers for some reason. Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and talk about this thing and what's going on with it. Um, it's actually mine now. Um, you guys who've been watching my channel for quite some time may remember a video back in the early summer when I got one of these from the computer place. It was a part system and used its motherboard. To build a Windows Me Sarah set top box. Well, the reason why this one came in was because um, there was no video going to the monitor. And <clears throat> with a lot of the older AMD based laptops and some of the desktops, it was common for the Norpreet chip to fail and cause you don't get a video signal at all. Now, this one actually does put a video signal to the monitor, it's just blank, there's nothing on the screen. And generally, as I had mentioned with the previous instances of, of this occurring, you know, where you get no video signal, usually the computer would not post, it would not boot into Windows or do anything like that. Well, this one boots into Windows and everything. It's just, there's no video signal to the monitor. And no, it's not the monitor. That monitor there works fine. I tried both the VGA and the DVI connections. Neither of them put out a signal. And now this is an AMD APU based motherboard. It's an E300 series APU. Um, and I believe this is actually our sound bridge on these setups. One thing I may try with it is I may try reflowing that sound bridge to see if it comes back. But yeah, basically, um, you know, the person had just bought a brand new laptop. And I, you know, I advised them that the Considering how cheaply made these things are, I mean, they're, they're probably, I think these were probably going for maybe less than $300, maybe 250 I don't know, back in 2011 or so, I guess, when these things were sold. Um, considering how cheap in these things are, they're not really worth going to the trouble to fix. Because um, reflows are not guaranteed. And, and as I mentioned, he just got a brand new laptop. And this thing had already um, had gotten infected in the past with... Um, what CryptoWire I think it's called. You know that virus that um, locks up your files. And the machine had, you know, been wiped, reloaded with Windows not long ago, so the person didn't have any files on there really. So I bought off them for like twenty bucks as a parts machine. Gonna attempt to see if I can get that board to work, you know, get the NVIDIA to work again, but I'm not really expecting too much. So let's go and power it up and show you what it actually does. And as I mentioned, no power supply built into the machine. It's basically a laptop brick. Which is a good thing if you're wanting to <laughs> design a um, TV box. And look what we have here. You guys remember that video I just done not long ago of uh, these crap replacement AC adapters? You know, <laughs> perhaps that might be part of the reason why this thing has failed. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's real promising right there. Don't drop it, it might bust open while it's plugged in. <laughs> it does supply power to it, but who knows how clean that power actually is. Now watch this. Monitor does come on. You see it flips on and off as um, it posts 
and you know when it starts to boot but there's no signal there, there's no video signal actually getting to the display either through the VGA or the DVI ports both of those ports will light up you know will start the display up but you just get this black screen and you can see the machine is doing stuff I mean the hard drive LED is active and I'll just keep the camera there for a moment and show you that it's not like frozen or anything that will start to flicker out and do other things it's just loading windows right now and these are not known to be the fastest machines either okay monitor just flipped off again yeah it's it's, it's booting windows it's probably about the point of the login screen unless there's no password and I'll just assume the desktop keyboard numb lock response it's not frozen Our disk LED is fully lit. If you listen closely, we're better yet. You can hear the hard drive is actually reading. There's the rest of the machine there. So it does in fact work. It's just again no video now this actually puts it to sleep it doesn't shut off like I like it to but yeah that's kinda interesting usually when you have um, no video issues it, typically the machine itself is like frozen in the, or better yet to say it doesn't post or even get into windows at all it just sits there and doesn't do anything but in this case it does in fact um, start up and you know it posts goes into windows but there's this no video signal to the monitor and it's not a windows issue it's not a software based issue with windows because we're not getting a po you know we're not getting the post screen either kinda odd See, I know this has been a lot of talking, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and unplug this thing. And let me show you what we do have in here. <clears throat> we'll go and tear it apart. Now, as I mentioned, I will try to do something with that board. Uh, see if I can get the video to work again sometime. That way, if I want to build me another TV box slim, I'll easily be able to do so. Or if I want to use it for some other low power application, it'd be good for that because that's the key thing I like about these boards is they're so efficient. They they don't use much power at all. So anyways, AMD E300 Essential Series APU machine has three gigs of DDR3, 10600. Mismatched sticks. I wonder if these are both original. I bet it probably had. It may have only had two gigs at one time, and they um, had it serviced, and somebody put an extra gig of RAM in it. I guess I don't know. You know, typically kinks in RAM you'll find <laughs> in machines that were taken to like Worst Buy or or pencils. Yeah, staples <laughs> to be serviced. Yeah, because that's typically what they sell off the shelf. They just go grab it off the shelf. Somebody pays about four times what the RAM is actually worth and pays an exorbitant price to have it installed. Yeah. That's part of the way I got actually involved in the computers years ago. Mom decided she was tired of paying um, Worst Buy to install their install their RAM or better yet, um, I call it Meek Squad to install their to install the RAM. You see my mom took it upon herself to replace burnt out um, fax modems and RAM. Never was a computer tech before. Just took it upon herself to learn how to do simple things. And that's really what got me started in computers. For those who did not know. So let's get everything unplugged out here. And for those who didn't know, if, you, if you're if you seeing this kind of machine for the first time, if you didn't in fact see the previous part system videos with the compact version of this thing, 
you know, I, I mentioned previously that you know it's a cheap end machine that's not really serviceable. You can't, you can't. Well, it's, it's serviceable, but you can't really upgrade it. It's, it's like it's a throwaway machine. You can, you can put a, you can replace the original hard drive with a big one, but you can't even add an extra hard drive to this thing unless you want to give up your optical drive. Um, but yeah, the case would not even give you a place to put an extra hard drive. I mean, it's just so much wasted space. I mean, look at look at all this space in this thing. It's gone wasted. Now, if I really wanted to reuse a case like this, um, you know, I could reuse it for a regular desktop build. Because this power supply area can be, um, you know, drilled out. You have to drill these rivets out and get that big piece of metal out of the way. But there's nowhere to put expansion cards, so it's kind of pointless. You only have one hard drive bay, one aqua drive bay. It's just, it's just a piece of crap. The, the case is junk, really. Um, so, anyways, you know, the thing is so self-contained, you know, that the power supply is built into the motherboard. It gets 19 volts from the laptop AC adapter. 18 volts comes in, and this, and this motherboard actually has a circuitry. DC to DC conversion circuitry to get you your 3.3 volts, your 5 volts, your 12 volts, and you know, all that good stuff if the machine needs. It says a hard drive and optical drive are actually powered straight off the board. Which, you know, not good for for those who like to upgrade their computers, but it's, it's dang near great in a case where you want to build your TV box like I did. In such a small setting, like in, in literally in a set top box case. Now, okay, enough rambling on. Let's go ahead and pull out the hard drive. See what size we have there. I literally do not know. Like I, mentioned, I just got this thing not long ago, and I didn't even look up the specs on it yet, so it's, it's really a new machine to me. Paid the guy 20 bucks for it. Even the motherboard is not even salvageable. Um, it's still a good deal because I'm getting a hard drive, getting a um, optical drive, and a one to seven license to use on a refurbished machine or something else. So pretty simple. The hard drive just bolts in to the bottom. Heck, I don't even think you can even put in a solid state drive in this thing unless you had the right kind of adapter with the correct screw holes. I'll never forget the first time I saw one of these things while I was still working at Staples. Didn't know what to think of it. Alright, let's see what size hard drive we have in this thing. Not expecting too much. It is a pretty basic end computer. Seagate, huh? Not bad. It's a 500 gigabyte to 7200 .12. I've actually used several of these. Um, I'd say about 50% of them fail within the warranty period. <laughs> but this is a newer one, so it should be okay. Manufacturer date is 2011, so you know the ones that were made, I think, after 2010, are better quality than the ones like 09, the earlier ones. So we have, you know, AMD A300, I'm sorry, E300 APU. Let's see. 3 gigs of RAM, 500 gig hard drive, and the DVD burner. So I'm going to end it here because there's not really much more to talk about. There are a couple of little things. Motherboard that we might be able to fix. 92 millimeter fan, one of seven license, and some metal to have recycled, because that's really all this case is worth. It's junk. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments? Feel free, feel free to ask. And thanks for watching.